You know, I'm reminded of um, a word that the Lord gave me in uh, 2011. We were in our time of pre-service prayer, and um, as we were just walking and praying, praying in the Spirit, listening to the Spirit of the Lord, um, the Lord gave me a prophetic word, and he said, um, the nations have entered a tipping point moment. Those of you that have been around for a while, you've, you've heard us preach this, but he said the nations have come into a tipping point moment. And, you know, I think, I think we all understand a tipping point is, you know, if you put something up here and you start pushing it, there's a point where it actually tips and falls on its own. You don't have to push it anymore, right? And so I kind of understood, you know, basically what the concept of tipping point was. And we had a guy in our church back then, uh, Mike Ginn. He's a wonderful, wonderful man. He worked for Cisco, big technology company. And so I began to share what... Um, you know, what I heard the Lord say. And so I, I would jokingly, I used to tell Mike, I'd say, um, Mike, break this down for me. Speak blonde to me. Okay. Don't be offended, blondes. Okay. <laughs> All right. And I would just, I would say, speak blonde to me, Mike, because if I would ask him, say, Mike, please explain this. He would get really super technical and complicated. And I'd be like, no, 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 no. It's just speak blonde to me. Okay. And um, for those of you that know, I love to tell blonde jokes because uh, number one, I know that I am not stupid. And number two, I know that I'm not really blonde. So, okay. I can, I can tell blonde jokes. Okay. Um, but so he was explaining to me, he said, you know, so if you have to try to tip something that's very, very heavy, he said, basically, you're going you're gonna to take three stages. He said, for example, if we're going to go into the parking lot and some of us guys are going to tip a car over, I was a little alarmed at his analogy, but like he's a spring breaker or something, you know? <laughs> And I said, I said, okay, all right, I'll go with the analogy. He said, if we're going to tip a car over, the first thing we've got to do is we've got to lift it. And then at some point as we're lifting, we've got to shift and we've got to get under it. And then we've got to push. And he said, the tipping point happens when gravity that has been working against you suddenly begins to work for you. So hear what the Lord's saying. As we're at a tipping point, everything that has been working against us has the opportunity to work for us if we push a little harder. Come on, if we stay engaged and as we continue to press in the Spirit, I believe that we have an ability to see things tip. Now, when the Lord spoke that to me, that was in 2011. And this was when, about a week later, um, violence broke out in Tunisia, bro violence broke out in Iran, violence broke out throughout the Middle East, and they called it the Middle Eastern Awakening because all of a sudden the people started rising up. Um, the Lord gave me a word about Egypt during that time, and Egypt actually rose up and overthrew Mubarak, um, if you remember that. Um, and Every single day you turned on the television um, and every day you picked up a newspaper, it said, Egypt is in a tipping point. Iran is in a tipping point. Tunisia is in a tipping point. How many know that when God wants to do something, he begins to announce it through the mouths of his prophetic people? And the Middle East was in a tipping point. And the thing about a tipping point is that it can get worse or it can get better. I don't want to be passive and just let get things get worse. Apostle Tom's been challenging us about spiritual warfare. So I believe that this is the time that we've got to know how we can personally engage as believers, as the ecclesia. How do we engage to help things tip? Look at the definition of tipping point according to Google, okay? It says the point at which something becomes irreversible and unstoppable. This occurs because momentum builds up often slowly and quietly until a point when it becomes impossible to go back to a previous state. I believe that we're gaining some momentum. Can you feel it in the spirit when you come to church? Can you feel this spiritual momentum that's building? It's changing us. It's charging us. It's challenging us. And when we go out of here, we have to understand that we carry that anointing with us everywhere we go and that we are to be God's ecclesia and we are to be engaged in the tipping point moments that God is bringing in your workplace, in the schools, in our community, in our businesses, and that 
that God is asking us to partner with him in this season of time. That's what spiritual warfare really is about. It is a season of breakthrough. Come on. Breakthrough is going to happen. It's a matter of do we get to be a part of it? Here's the definition of breakthrough. It's not on a screen. I should have put it on a screen. But I love the definition of breakthrough because it brings it into the understanding that it deals with spiritual warfare. Because the definition of breakthrough is that it is a, it is a military movement or advance all the way through and beyond the enemy's frontline defense. Come on, we sing about breakthrough, we pray for breakthrough, we celebrate breakthrough. But what it is, is God making us the army of the Lord, the ecclesia, God making, God making us a people who know how to get involved, who know how to contend against darkness, who know how to contend against the things that the enemy wants to do to steal, kill, and destroy, and to rob lives, to rob communities, and yes, even to rob nations. And so he's saying, it is a military movement. So if we want breakthrough, we've got to understand this is a military word. And it's not just about going through, it's about going beyond. Come on, the church is pretty good at breaking through. I need healing, pray for me, I get healed, praise God. But what we've let it be is we've let it be breakthrough as an ending instead of understanding that breakthrough is not the end of a matter. Breakthrough is the beginning of a new season of victory and authority. In other words, when you pray for me and I get healed, now I've got greater faith to now lay hands on the sick so they can get healed. We break through and then we go beyond. It is the overcoming of every obstacle, barrier, and hindrance to progress. It is the point where, that tipping point, where things that have been impossible suddenly become possible. And I want you to lay hands on your head because we get so stuck in what we think is impossible. Years ago, I was praying about impossible. And, and, and the Lord kind of said, here's a, here's a good definition of impossible. It is something that absolutely, positively cannot be done until somebody does it. You, you can take your hands off your head. God's changing our mind. Things that were once thought to be impossible, are we're living in, a, in an age where things are becoming possible every single day. And if you read John Maxwell, he'll talk to you about the principle of the one-man breakthrough. How many have ever heard this? It's when something is thought to be impossible, and then one person breaks through, and that breakthrough breaks the way open for many, many others to break through. For example, they used to say that it was absolutely physically, humanly impossible for a person to run a four-minute mile. Could not be done until Roger Bannister did it. When did he do that? Does anybody know what decade that was? I could tell you all anything then. No, I don't know when he did it. But since he's broken through, since he broke the four-minute mile, hundreds and even thousands of people have run a four-minute mile. They used to say that it was physically, humanly impossible for people to climb to the top of Mount Everest. They said that the, the way that the air was, the, the terrain, that it was far too difficult. No one could actually do it. It was absolutely impossible until Sir Edmund Hillary went to the top of Mount Everest with his team and now today, you know who's climbing to the top of Mount Everest? Grandmas. Not this grandma, okay, but grandmas. Handicapped people. A one-leg man, a man that only has one leg, climbed to the top of Mount Everest. Why? Because what was once said to be impossible became possible because one person broke through. A couple of years ago, a guy named Eliud Kipchoge from Africa did something incredible. He ran a marathon, said to be impossible, ran a marathon in under two hours. I think the way that it factors out, he would have had to have run a four minute mile for the entire marathon, just about. And he broke the two hour mark of a marathon, 26 miles, 26.3, is that right, Sally? Point two. She, she's my fact checker up here on marathons, right? 
But understand this. They said they could not be done. How many things do we have stuck in our heads that cannot be done? And God is saying, I'm looking for a generation that believes that impossible things can actually become possible. 